Okay, so in this video, we're gonna build our dedicated server locally and test that. We're gonna make a few changes in the Unreal Engine game so that we can test the client and server network interaction and just make sure everything is correct and working. So what I'm gonna do is open up the Visual Studio solution file and there's already a build target for the editor uh, within the project by default. And we can use that as a base to sort of create our new server build target. So as this loads up, you'll see on the right hand side, we have a VS editor target.cs file. Uh, we're going to create a new one and we're going to use this as the basis. So let's just right click and add a new item in the location. We want to basically change that to be unreal and then the source folder. We'll select that folder and then add a new file. And this is going to be called VS server .target .cs. We'll add that into our project. It's a nice empty file. And we can copy and paste the editor target into here and make a few changes. So we're gonna first rename the class to be VS to server target. And we'll also make sure that we have our constructor renamed as well. For the type, we're gonna change it from editor to server. And we also then need to add on the class an attribute the attribute we need for this is going to be supported platforms and then in parentheses, unreal platform class dot server. And that's basically it. That's our build target setup. So if we save that and we close this down, we can then open up unreal and basically make sure that we can then build our dedicated server as expected. So in unreal engine, we should now find that if we go to package project and we basically have a build target now for VS server. And in the package project itself, build configuration, we're gonna leave as development. And we're gonna build it for Win64 just to test it. And what we're gonna do is basically create a new folder called releases. And within here, we'll select the folder and basically that will start packaging the dedicated server. So I'm gonna leave that doing that just for a minute and then I'll jump back into the video once it's complete. Okay, that's for now finished building. So if we go into our folder, we've got a releases folder here and Windows server. What I'm gonna do is create a shortcut. So we'll create a quick shortcut here and right click on that and click properties. On the end of the target here, we're gonna just put dash log and hit apply. And then we can double click that just to see whether it actually starts up. And here is our Unreal server built for Windows. So the next thing we wanna do is just test that, you know, we can connect to uh, this server uh, from, the, from our game. So what I'm gonna do here is just go up to the play settings and ensure my net mode is play on standalone and the number of players is one. And the other thing I'm gonna do for now actually is in our current map we've got here, we've actually got a um, character sort of in the world. So I'm just going to delete that for now because it can get a bit confusing and it's not what we need because when we connect to a game um, it will actually spawn us uh, at our player start location which is just here, our network player start. So if I hit play um, you'll notice that I'm in our world but we're in our world locally just right now and what we want to do is actually connect to our server here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit play and we're going to be in our local uh, client world. And what I'm going to do next is then open 127.0.0.1, also known as localhost. We'll hit that. And then you'll notice that something strange happens in the sense that ultimately our screen's gone blank. But if you notice within our server window, everything has worked correctly. We've connected to the server from our local client. And what's actually going on here is there is a, a pro project settings that allows you to specify what map gets loaded when you connect to the server. So if we go to edit project settings and we search for server map, you'll notice it's actually loading the server default map, which is called entry, which is actually part of the Unreal Engine itself. To make things a bit clearer on what's going on, what I think we should probably do is create a client map and a server map. To do this, I'm gonna create a new folder in content 
called VS and another folder within here called maps. And I'm going to basically copy the map from here and paste it in our new folder. And I'm going to rename this to client map. And then I'm going to duplicate it once more and call this server map. We'll open up server map. And what we'll do is just change this text on here to server map, just to make it clear. And we'll do the same for the client map. We'll change this to client map. And if we go back to our project settings in Unreal, and we change that server map to be server map. And then we also then need to change, if I search for maps, the game default map to be client map and our editor style, we may as well change to client map as well, just to keep things tidy. So if I save that and hit play, we're now in our client map, which is all good. What we are gonna to need to do though, is obviously rebuild our server. Uh, the other thing is that when you build the server, you actually have to tell Unreal what maps to include. So if we go back to the project settings, uh, you'll notice that in packaging down here, you need to add in the maps that get part, get placed in part of the package. So I'm gonna add in our maps, which is basically game, Unreal, content versus maps, and we're gonna add the client map. And we're gonna add another one, the server map. And we're gonna save. So just before we repackage the server, what we do need to do is actually close down the running server, else it won't be able to overwrite the files because they'll be in use. So if we just go to our server and we just close that down, now we're ready to start repackaging the server. So let's go up to file and then go to package project. You can see our build target is still VS server. Our build configuration is still development. We can hit Win64, select the folder, and then it will repackage the project for Windows once again with our new settings, including the maps that we need, just so that we can test to make sure that the entry map gets loaded when we connect the client to it. So packaging is now completed. Let's start the game locally and just ultimately start the server up once again. So if I go to the game in Unreal Guide, Unreal, releases, Windows Server, we've still got our shortcut. The server starts up and now using the console uh, tilde key, once again, we can open 127.0.0.1. And now you can see, if we look at the ground, we're now connected into the server on the right map called server map. Okay, so let's test what happens when we have multiple clients connect to the server. To do this, we're gonna to go to play and we're gonna just change the net mode to play standalone and number of players, we're gonna to set to two. Uh, and then basically if we hit play, we're gonna get uh, an editor client and we're also gonna get a window for another client on the right hand side. Uh, much as we've done before, uh, we can now use the tilde key to bring up the console and open up to connect to our server. We're now in the server map on the right hand side and on the editor, we'll do the same thing. And you'll also see that we're now connected. You can now see the gun of the other player floating in space and just to prove that the movement works. As you can see, this uh, actor is being replicated and the other clients can see the movement. So with that said, we'll uh, go into more detail on sort of adding uh, replication uh, so that basically we have player models and other movement uh, as well as, as you can see, projectiles not also replicating at the moment. But for now, this gets us to a place where we have our server connected and tested with multiple clients. In the next video, we're going to go through taking our skeleton dedicated server and turning it into a Docker image to allow us to then deploy it into eventually what will be a hosted Kubernetes environment. So stay tuned for those videos.